In this week's book review, book review number one, I talk about Paulo Coelho, The Alchemist. I get a little distracted. I uh, give you eight, I think, quotes uh, from this book. I talk about a little synopsis. I'm not gonna give away the special ending or all the details in the book, but the quotes will help you uh, in your mind, hopefully expand your world, expand your thought process. This is my number one book to recommend uh, to date. Um, Chloe's gonna hit the Muzak. Uh, she doesn't have thumbs, but she's gonna hit the little space bar and we'll get into the show. All right, see you in a few, guys. Hey guys, my name is Chris Martin. I'm with the Real Albuquerque Podcast video cast. Uh, today coming at you, uh, if you didn't listen to us last week, we had Adam Schwartz on the show when he kind of took over the show impromptu style. Uh, we asked some answered some questions about how you get some things started, how um, how you find some maybe passions, and how you can uh, kind of find something that helps you move forward. You have to listen to it, watch it to find out uh, more. And this week, we are going to take a different step and talk about uh, book reviews. Um, what came out of last week was one thing that I've been doing for a long time, uh, for last, I don't know, six, eight months now, maybe even more, nine months, uh, you can see the stacks of books uh, here. And one of, the, one of the things that I was told by a mentor type was that you need to read a book a week and crush through that book a week. Grant Cardone, Gr the GC, Uncle GC, Grant Cardone talks about this. Um, Andy Frisell talks about this, others talk about this. And there's so many different things that you get out of these books. Um, whether it's the Four Agreements, Donald Trump's classic, The Art of the Sale. Uh, I read this before, he was popular in the sense of this whole uh, campaigning craziness. Uh, you have Relentless, From Good to Great, Be Unstoppable, talking about uh, sports by Tim Grover. Growth Hacking Marketing, Angry Customers Tell 3,000 uh, Tribes, great book. The 10X Rule by Uncle G, Grant Cardone himself. The One Thing, The Surprise and the Simple Truth Behind Extraordinary Results by Gary Keller with Jay Papasan. The Slide Edge, Jeff Olison. Um, the Image, Knowledge and Life in the Society, Old School Psychology Style book. Our Lewis Hayes, Lewis Hayes, Lewis whatever, The School of Greatness. Timothy Ferris, Tim Ferriss' Four Hour Work Week, Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell, All In. I have some other books. This is just a small sample of what I've gone through uh, year to date. I have some other books on Audible that I crushed through. Um, but these piles of books will help you form thoughts differently, think about the world differently. These guys are all. You know, most of them are New York bestsellers. Most of them have built a career. Uh, Timothy Ferris' four-hour work week, very interesting. If you don't believe you can turn your work into four hours a week, Tim paints a pretty good picture on why you can. Um, some people want to be more involved in four hours, so uh, there's a theory there. Um, the Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. How to Get Ahead by Taking Minute compounded interest steps day after day after day after day. Great book, great theory. Uh, 10X Rule by Grant Cardone. This book will tell and explain to you how you're thinking too small and you need to 10X your actions. Take 10 more actions than the other guy. Dream 10 times bigger than you're currently dreaming. Oh man, The Four Agreements, a Toltec wisdom book. Uh, sounds silly, pretty small. Great book. I'm not going to tell you the four agreements until we review the book, um, but you could find that online. That's a great book. Here's one that came in uh, via shipping from First Form. Andy Frisella sent this book to me, as he did a few other people from Periscope. Uh, the Magic of Thinking Big. Uh, he's high on this book. Great book if you haven't read this. Acquire the Secrets of Success. Achieve Everything You've Always Wanted. Personal Property, Financial Security. Oh man, here's another book that I have uh, that I read. I haven't gone through it all because you can see my uh, 
Russian flag bookmark here. Uh, Jack Canfield's The Success Principles. I like to hammer out one of these success principles a day. Uh, big book, so it's taken me a while. And sometimes I don't do it every day, so honesty there. But this week, uh, out of all of these books, I am going to review and give you guys... Uh, I read this book. Now, it was my first book, so a little background on me, Chris Martin. Uh, never really been a fan of books. If you know me my in uh, in... IRL in the real world, or IRW, no, IRL in real life, little instant messenger throwback, um, pre-emoji code. In real life, I never really liked reading books. I always liked reading maybe factual books, if at all. I was always into magazines where I see visuals of cars and pictures. Very visual person, that's how I learn, that's how I do a lot of my um, learning is through visual. And that visual goes through life of seeing examples of how people do things, how uh, things should be done. You can see and learn and observe. Uh, I work better observing and learning through visuals and stuff like that. So to take a book and to actually read it, and if you know me in IRL in real life, you'd probably say, uh, Chris is probably full of it. But today we're going to go through one of my favorite books. I didn't read this first uh, in my 52-year in my 52 week, 52 book journey that I'm gonna continue uh, uh, like I have until I have a Ty Lopez garage full of books. Um, you know, because books start getting thin after a while, but uh, thank you to Audible, thank you to Amazon, there's book recommendations of ones that I'm trying to, uh, you just pick up, you're like, okay, five bones, I'll read it to see and gain some knowledge here, see what this guy's doing. Now, reading books, of course, is not gonna make you successful. Reading books is just the foundation. In all of these books that you read that are business, motivation, um, The Alchemist, which we're going to review today, um, this is a story that uh, has a little nuances of motivation. Great story. One of my favorite books by Paulo Coelho. Uh, hopefully I'm saying that right. Will Smith loves this book. Everybody loves this book. If you haven't read this book, this is my top number one book where you should start. This book talks about a story. I'm just going to go right into the review, folks. This book follows uh, a kid named Santiago, who is an Andalusian sheep farmer, which in Andalusia, I guess, uh, sheep farming um, is, uh, is a good job. Now, I don't know his age. I can't remember exactly his age, but I would say mid uh, 20s, low 20s, high 18s. Uh, he didn't really have too much education, so he started uh, herding sheeps uh, to sell their wool and make money like that. So he's uh, an OG gangster entrepreneur guy from Andalusia, and the way he speaks, it doesn't sound like you know he's getting rich anytime soon. But he's surviving off the land. He's uh, surviving in life, and he's doing it his own way. Now, in this book, I'm just gonna give you a few. Um, Brief synopsis. I'm not going to ruin the book. Um, much like both all of our book reviews, I'm going to give you a brief synopsis. Some of these books, like Tim's Four Hour Work Week, I can't explain that book unless I just read it page by page. You know, there's just so much content packed in some of these books that I'm going to do bullet points. It's not going to be by any means the full book, but it's going to give you an idea. And of course, links to buy the book are in this podcast comments section, the description of the podcast, or if you're watching this on YouTube or video in 4K, it's in the description below. Either way, it's in the description, links to Amazon, so you can buy this stuff. Back to the story, Santiago, the Andalusian sheep herder. Long sentence, uh, cool, cool job. Um, I have to go, I wrote this name down because I can't remember it exactly, so he keeps having this dream of going to Egypt and at the foothills of the pyramids um, is a, a lost treasure. And that treasure, he thinks, is, gonna, is uh, something he wants to go after. And he keeps having these dreams. So he goes to a psychic. And the psychic, uh, you know, does all the crystal ball stuff. Or if you prefer modern day uh, uh, examples, uh, the magic eight ball like you've always seen. She shakes the magic eight ball, a little blue juice goes around. Uh, she does all the little stuff with the, the crystal ball, foam, and, you know, dry ice stuff comes up. And she says that he needs to go 
um, and pursue this dream. Now he keeps having these dreams and he finally, uh, you know, he meets another guy called Melch is a dick. Melch is a dick. Can't pronounce it in the book. That is blasted past that word. Melch is a dick. Sounded good to me, so I kept on moving. Not sure on the exact pronunciation, guys, so let's not make that a focal point. But anywho, he, he was this old guy, uh, disheveled looking guy who claimed to be the king of Salem. Don't know who that is. Um, got a little notification on the phone, so we'll just blank that out. Um, and Melch, 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 I'll just call him Melch, okay? Melch, <laughs> Melch to Gizadek, um, convinces um, Santiago that he should go after his dream too, to sell his whole uh, sheep. Um, I can't what you uh, get a sheep herd, sheep flock, whatever you call them, multi-sheeps, sheepies. Uh, he said, sell the sheepies, take that money, go to Tangier, um, and go after, so Andalusia is up here, Tangier somewhere here, and pyramids are somewhere here. So he's going south. He's going south to, um, he says go on your journey and find um, what you need to find. Go to those pyramids and make it happen. Once he gets into um, um, Tangier, he has some bad luck. I'm not going to tell you what happens. But he ends up working at a um, crystal vase merchant guy. And this guy's a more conservative cat who uh, rolled, you know, I'm not going to say words like mediocre average, but just kind of rolled in the middle. You know, never did too, uh, anything too exciting. Um, and Santiago is kind of like the guy who's like, uh, has a fleeting mentality. I got to go to, I got to go to Egypt. I got to go to Egypt. And this guy's saying, well, calm down. Um, um, you know, whatever, you don't need to take risks. And Santiago's like, I got to take risks. I got to get to Egypt. I got to find these these uh, pyramids, this treasure. Um, it's been haunting me in my dreams. Everybody says I got to do it. Uh, so he keeps on moving. He gets out of the, the crystal merchant. Uh, he gets out of that job, keeps going south, and goes through the desert, uh, riding with this, he finds this camel I don't know. Back to herds again. He finds this camel herd, camel flock, camel camels, camelies. I don't know. Multi camel thing. Uh, they call that maybe. Man, I'm blanking on the word. Um, where they have a bunch of camels and they they transport much like uh, buses here in in America. Man, what is that called? If you're listening to this via audio or on YouTube, you're like Chris. It's this, and I can't hear you. So uh, we're gonna move past that. Um, Dang it, though. Safari, something like that. He meets uh, a group of camels and a group of uh, camel guys. And they uh, take him as far as they can go. And then he comes into a tribe and meets this girl that he likes. And he tells the girl, well, you know, I wish I could stay with you, but I got to keep going to Egypt to the pyramids to find this treasure. And eventually he makes it to the pyramids and finds um, what he thinks he's looking for. And all along the book, the alchemist... Um, well, he meets the alchemist when he's on that, when he's in the desert. Uh, the alchemist is on that same safari, come on, I don't know the word, uh, where the camel flocks, and he meets this alchemist, and the alchemist tells him that he can create his own dreams, he can create whatever he used to create, uh, if I'm wrong, uh, he used to create, like, steel, and he could turn it into gold, and, uh, Santiago's will like, prove it, but he's like, well, you know, I don't need to prove it. So... He ends up getting to, uh, the alchemist teaches a bunch of lessons. The woman that he meets who, um, she says, come find me after your, you find your treasure at the pyramids. Uh, I'm not going to tell you anything that happens after the pyramids because that's kind of a focal point of the book. And that happens like, you know, right here in the book. And there's still this many pages left. Uh, if you can't hear me, I'm flipping the book. Uh, you know, a lot of pages left. Um, so the story continues, and I can't tell you that ending because, um, and it ruined it. Really great book. I did not read this as my first book on my 52 book journey uh, this year. Um, but I would recommend starting there. And of all these books I got here stacked, these are just physical books. I have uh, maybe 10 or 15 books on Audible. I have other books strung out around the house, uh, success principles, other things. But out of all the books that I would say recommend starting first, I would start here. It has a great story. 
um, that's littered with life lessons along the way. Um, the story keeps me so intrigued and I never thought I'd be reading a book and enjoy it like this. Like, you know, everybody says, really oh, gotta read Harry Potter, you gotta read Game of Thrones. But, you know, I think I got more out of this than, you know, Game of Thrones ever would, than diving into fantasy of Harry Potter. Uh, you know, this teaches you life lessons that you can learn after the book. Uh, you guys can leave comments below saying yay or nay. Some of the quotes that I wrote down from this book, I have my notes here, um, that really struck me when I was reading this book and make you like, wow, okay, this is actually true. Um, one was, people are capable at any time in their lives of, do of doing what they dream of. Uh, you know, there's no such no such thing as being too old or too young, too fat, too skinny, too tall, too short, too anything, too bald, too much hair, um, whatever. There's no reason why you can't get what you're dreaming of. Great quote. This is probably one of my favorite quotes, quote number dose. I don't know. I'll go through maybe five or six quotes. You know, these are the big baller quotes, uh, the big quotes. This whole book is littered with quotes. The one on the back I'll talk about. Um, um, this is probably one of my favorite quotes. It says, when you want something, the universe conspires in helping you achieve it. So what you think about, uh, you bring about, basically. That's in a book called The Law of the Attraction. I have that book as well. We'll be reviewing that book. Guys, we'll be reviewing all these books uh, over the next 52 weeks for you. And, but that was one of the ones that hit me the most. The secret of life, though, is to fall seven times and to get up eight. So, you know, you gotta always move forward and never stop learning. Once you get knocked down, you gotta get back up. Um, and this quote, I don't know who made this quote first, whether it was Paulo Coelho who wrote this quote, or um, you know Rocky, or those other guys, or Muhammad Ali, or those other guys who have great quotes. This quote takes many forms, one of which that I can think of offhand is, is you have a plan until you get knocked in the face. Uh, I think that was Joe Rogan or Muhammad Ali, I don't know. Um, um, Rocky says it in his famous Rocky speech, no one can hit hard as life. Your life's gonna hit you hard and you have to get back up. That's a paraphrase. Uh, so this quote has many shapes, forms, sizes, colors, words, languages, but it really is true no matter how you hear it or how you say it or how you feel it. The secret of life, though, is to get, is to fall seven times and to get up eight. Quote number three. Everyone seems to have a clear idea of how other people should lead their lives, but none about his or her own. You see this all the time in life. People have always have how you should lead your life, how you should do this, or how you should, um, they're gonna share your opinions of how you should run your business, or how you should work out, or how you should do this, or how you should eat, or how you should live, how you should, they should, they should on you, should, not the other S-H-I-T word, but they should on you. <laughs> I don't know why I spelled that out like Chloe doesn't know what that word is or, you know, I don't know if you uh, can speak English, you know what that word means, but I don't know why I spelled it out. Went to old school on you. But people will should on your life um, whether it's the right way to do it or not. And uh, let's not shit on anybody, but you have your clear idea. At the end of the day, you're the only person who's going after these dreams. You, need to, you don't need to compare yourself to anybody else. You just gotta do your own thing, run your own race, and keep moving forward, a little slight edge. Compound interest and keep moving forward. Uh, I think that's quote three. So quote four, this is a really good one. Um, man. People are afraid to pursue, pursue their most important dreams because they feel that they don't deserve them or that they'll be unable to achieve them. That goes deeply into this book uh, and kind of, you know, 10X rule uh, by Grant Cardone, Uncle GC. For many reasons, people's dreams remain just that, dreams, right? Merely dreams for their entire lives 
And what happens when they get towards the end of the, their life? They say, man, I wish I did this. And whatever this is, is what you could be doing now, right? Which is your dream. Um, Colonel Sanders started KFC in, the mid, in his mid 70s or 80s or mid 60s, right? You know, I don't know if his dream, uh, his dream was cooking. I don't know if it was making fried chicken and coleslaw, but uh, he went after his dream even at an older age and made it happen. Um, we doubt ourselves, we doubt our capabilities, we doubt what's possible in, in real life, IRL. We doubt what we're capable of. Um, we doubt ourselves. And if you don't pursue these goals or dreams or take a chance and try it out and say, hey man, you know, one of my dreams is painting and I really would love to paint um, the Starry Night, um, some Vincent Van Gogh thing, some Picasso thing, or paint the mountains. And you paint it and it comes out all crazy and you're like, okay, I tried painting, maybe I really got excited and I want to make this the Sandy Mountains better. Or you're like, okay, I tried it, not really a fan. Maybe I was more a fan of the idea of it. But when you're later in life, you're not gonna go back and say, hey man, I wish I painted. I never knew if I was really good or not. Um, and then you'll be too uh, late to find that out. You'll be, man, I wish I would have tried that. So don't wish, don't end your life wishing that you have done something now. A famous quote, uh, which is a sub quote of this quote is, you'll wish you would have started um, what you wanted today, yesterday, you know? So people say, well, I want to do this. And they always say that, and then it's like, I'll do it tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes and they'll do it tomorrow. So start this thing, attack this now, take small steps, big steps, whatever you need to do. People are, for, are afraid to pursue their most important dreams because they feel they don't deserve them or that they'll be unable to achieve them. So don't let that be you. It's in this book, um, really good. If you're gonna believe anything in this lifetime, believe in yourself, right? If you believe, if you're going to believe in anything in this lifetime, believe in yourself. That's from Paulo Coelho himself. Last quote, quote number five, minus this bonus quote. At a certain point in our lives, we lose control of what's happening to us, and our lives become controlled by fate. That's the world's greatest lie. Uh, lie. We are always in control of our own lives. We choose which path to take, where to go, and with whom to spend our time, right? It's never too late to seize control of our lives. It's never too late to uh, attack what we want. We just have to be aware of the... We just have to be aware of the choices we make. Uh, we are ultimately in control of our destinies and don't let fate or don't let external um, situations try to lead you to believe that you know, you're not in control. You are, you are. Do you go to the gym? Yes or no? It's a simple decision tree. Now, there may be external factors saying, I have kids, I have financial responsibility, I can't pay for the gym, I don't have time, I got this, I got that. So, but it's a simple choice. Uh, you know, yes, no, and maybe might be is, hey, I can't go to the gym today, but I'm gonna do 15 minutes of workout before I go to bed, right? That's my time, right? I, whether you go to bed and, you know, you know what I'm saying, I'm not gonna try to shit on you, but there are ways to do it, and you are ultimately in control of your own destiny. Fate is not, um, you ultimately will make the choices that uh, will make you successful, will make you mediocre and average, or make you unsuccessful. So choose the right choices. That's a little slight edge once again. Great book. We're going to talk about it, so don't get too uh, spun out on that. Great book. Um, all these great books, of course. Okay, last quote, bonus quote number seis, uh, or chest if you're Russian, seis if you're Spanish, um, or Andalusian. Uh, if you're Portugal, don't know what it is. If you're Canadian, it's six. Uh, if it's Ebonics, think it's six. Um, English, six. Uh, sign language, maybe six. Or it's like this, I don't know. Um, but we're on quote number six. I don't know why it's been 10 seconds saying six in uh, 10 different languages, six of them uh, that had the same pronunciation. Okay, quote number six. To realize one's destiny is a person's only obligation. And that's what the alchemist said in the book. 
So you can see it here if you're watching. I'm just showing the back of the book. Um, and the alchemist is the guy who meets on the caravan. That's it. It's called a caravan. Camel caravan, guys. Um, the, the brain got the juices going, talking about the quotes maybe. But they were on a camel caravan, and he met the, he met the alchemist. Santiago met the alchemist. I don't know. If, uh, I think we know his name, but it just kind of goes by the alchemist, if I remember correctly. I read this, well, I don't know, maybe 20... 20, 25 weeks ago, maybe 30 weeks ago. It kind of shows you in depth of where we are. We're, this is July when we're filming it, so we're halfway. But I started this uh, in September, October, November of last year. Can't really remember. Um, but anywho, the alchemist said this quote, to realize one's destiny is a person's only obligation. And that's what we kind of talked about when Adam Schwartz took over the podcast last week is, well, how do you find this obligation? How do you find your dream? And I said, well... Your dream is gonna be simply, if you were making no money, what would you wanna do for the rest of your life? Do you wanna travel? Okay, let's start a travel blog. Or uh, you wanna, uh, I don't know, eat food? And let's start a food site of where you critique different things. I mean, the options are endless, guys. Think about that as that's your only obligation. And then maybe later you can figure out how to monetize that. And maybe you like working at the job that you're at and you want to do this on uh, as a hobby. I mean, and side monetize it as a hobby. Uh, it's whatever you want to do. No one's judging here on the cast. Um, oh, yeah. Great quote. Well, I had to read this after Christmas. I uh, must have read it in January this year or something of like that. I'm opening up the book and uh, my sister got this for me, actually. And there's a quote here that says, To Chris, I hope this expands your world. Love you so much, Jen. Christmas 2014. Yes, Jen, to answer your question, this has expanded my mind and world. And I'm hoping it does for all you listeners out there of the Real Albuquerque podcast videocast. Get this book today. The link is in the description. Uh, you can get it on Amazon, Audible, your local bookstore, Barnes & Noble. I don't know what local bookstores still exist. If they do, wherever you're at, page one, go down and get this, uh, get it used, get it new, get it, just get this book and read it. This is definitely one of the 52 books I would recommend this year. This is number one, numero uno, uh, numer adien, uh, if you're Russian, numero uno if you're Spanish. I'm not going to go through the whole list of uh, all the words, Canada, number one, <laughs> uh, America, number one, or English. So guys, my name is Chris Martin. This is The Real Albuquerque. This is my, I guess, 30-minute review of Paulo Coelho's The Alchemist. This is a must-buy, like I said, multiple times. Let me do a quick rundown of the five quotes in case uh, you forgot. Quote number six, to realize one's destiny is a person's only obligation. Boom, love it. Quote number five, at a certain point in our lives, we lose control of what's happening to us. And our lives become controlled by fate. That's the world's greatest lie. Quote number four. People are, are afraid to pursue their most important dreams because they feel that they don't deserve them or that they're unable to achieve them. You can achieve whatever you want. Quote number trace. Remember that wherever your heart is, there you will find your treasure. I actually didn't talk about that one. Bonus quote number seven. Um... Real quote number three, everyone seems to have a clear idea of how other people should lead their lives, but no one, but none about his or her own. Quote number deva, that's quote two for our Paruski, our Ruski guys. Uh, the secret of life, though, is to fall seven times and get up eight. Um, life's going to hit you as hard as it wants to, uh, knock you to your knees, you just got to get up, rocky. Um... You have a plan until until you get punched in the face. I don't know, maybe Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali, not sure who said that. Last quote, quote number one we talked about. When you want something, all of the universe conspires in helping you achieve it. Uh, that's actually quote two. I don't know, these quotes got all mixed up. Last quote, actually. People are, are capable at any times of life... Uh, <laughs> people are capable at any time in their lives of doing what they dream of. Okay, guys, my name is Chris Martin. This is The Real Albuquerque. This is book review number one, Paulo Coelho, The Alchemist. You can find it below in the description. Just click the link, hit buy on Amazon, and you are already rolling. This book will expand your world, will expand your mind. It's a fun journey, and uh, leave some comments below. You'll thank me later. If you get this and read it, man, this is where your journey 
to a new life starts. Okay guys, my name is Chris Marnett and I will see you later.